do you feel it would ease concerns somewhat if instead of all uh, intermediaries this rule was only applicable for significant social media intermediaries so um i i do think that um, there should be at least a distinction between various kind of intermediaries the right. current it act definition lumps everybody together cyber cafes have disappeared but even cyber cafe people if they is there is there is one they have the same obligations and whether it is an isp or a tsp or a large one or a small one everybody is required to do the same thing um a non profit like signal which has only 20 people in san francisco is also asked that you should have a presence in india and you should have three people for grievance redresser that's nonsense it's never going to work it's never going to happen it also fails to recognize the economy of internet the idea of internet is that you can start a business tomorrow it might do better and then you expand and but you might be working with a very small team so obviously different businesses have different obligations and different layers of the net the application layer is different the hardware layer is different so what airtel can do or a reliance geo can do you can't ask twitter to do the same things or so that should happen i am not but i will still say that the larger principle must stay to the fact that you are not using this censorship by proxy which is to say you know what if i as a government start censoring everybody will be able to come to court challenge it and say a bunch of things so let me do this roundabout indirect way oh it's come i didn't do anything facebook took it go take it with them and this uh, trying to choke somebody else's throat kind of a censorship i think that should not happen no matter how big the in social media intermediary is and again i will say you can't blow hot and cold at the same time decide do you want them to make that decision or you don't want to make that decision because we want them to take certain things down but when they do take certain things down and if it is of course of the government itself there would be a bruha of a different kind that is why principles and rules are more important rather than who's deciding them and that is why we fight about the fact whether you are significant in social media intermediary or you are an insignificant one by the definition certain things will definitely change but the larger principles cannot change i think it was last uh, it was in november that the uh, digital personal data protection bill came out and it had these fundamental duties for the citizens um do you think those can now be used as grounds to penalize the users who upload fake news or what has been deemed fake news by the pib i don't currently think so this is the first time i've actually seen i mean we after years and years it's like waiting for godot about we never have a bill we just i mean we never have a, rule, a law we just have bills after bills and discussions etc and it's never been um Uh, in my view it was a bill which should be called actually uh, as prescribed by the government because government has all the powers and they the good thing was they simplified it they removed the data localization requirement but in their desire to simplify it they've given all powers to the government and uh, they've taken all rights from the citizens so if i am being surveilled i have not no rights at all and government can do whatever they like they can decide the rules you can see if these it rules can wreak so much havoc what all can the government do with the variety of rules that are coming i think that's why when we talk about the colonial mindset the government has to get out of that to say that government is not in control they are public servants citizens have to be in control you and i don't want to be surveilled you and i want security and that is a tiny percentage of people who commit crime who are perhaps terrorists or who are trying to do certain things but that doesn't mean everybody should be treated like a criminal and we should know when our data is being used when you and i are under surveillance because if somebody is even watching here and seeing what i'm reading or what i am looking at tv i cannot think free and sometimes it's a variety of things i today might my, my parents might be uh, pro the government but i want to explore what other political parties say 
I don't want to, I want to read those things. Certain books I want to read, certain movies I want to see, people's sexuality, they want to explore about that. And uh, all of these things, we should be allowed that privacy. That didn't happen. But what we got was, oh, duties of the data principle. Now, those duties said, oh, you have to comply with applicable laws while exercising your rights, not make false complaints, not furnish false information while obtaining services, and furnishing verifiable authentic information. None of these can be used actually to say you are publishing false information unless it's about, as it rightly says, about obtaining a service. So I cannot say that, uh, you know what, I, I am uh, differently abled uh, and get some benefits from the government when I am not, or I can't lie about such things. If, I, uh, if my Aadhaar says I am this person, I should be that person, et cetera. But, um, but this thing about um, complying with applicable laws, there's no clarity around it. Which laws am I complying with? What am I doing here? There's just no, not enough information to chew on. And so um, right now I don't see anything about that, but because as I say that the day, the bill should be called as prescribed by the government bill. So if they decide to do something tomorrow, who can say what they what will come out of that? What consequences do you think an intermediary will face if they refuse to take down something that has been fact-checked as false by the Press Information Bureau? I think it's pretty clear, right? Because um, the first, first consequence is what, what should happen. Uh, I mean, for this entire thing, I think the Supreme Court should actually start understanding how urgent matters need to be addressed urgently. If they're going to decide demonetization, which happened in 2016 and 2023, so then what can you do? You can't do anything. They have been sitting on IT rules forever now. They need to take up this petition now and not later. And then because then they say, oh, facts on the ground have changed. So if everything is infructuous, then why aren't the Supreme Court if you can't react in time when it is required? The second thing I will say is that it's pretty easy. I'm not making an estimate around it. Section 79 of IT rules, we all forget because the details, you know, it's like oh, we, you lose the sight of the forest because we are all so engrossed in the trees right now. Why was Section 79 introduced? I wish Mr. Jaitley was alive today and he could explain it to the government because he was such a big ardent ar a, a proponent of this. India is a very talented country. India is has so many tech people running the entire world. 2001, somebody decides to come back to India. That is Avnish Bajaj. He starts Bazi.com, copies eBay, like every Indian was doing at that time. And uh, he starts it and then you arrest him because some IITN is selling some, um, uh, some material which perhaps is exploiting to young uh, high school students that time, a CD he's selling. Now, please tell me that if I open, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like a thing like uh, Amazon or something, you can't hold the CEO responsible because somebody's selling something wrong. All you can do is perhaps that uh, there should be more checks about what is being sold, et cetera. It was very new. And the parliament was like, this is right. We have to change our law because if we kept putting CEOs in jail, who's going to be able to run a business here? So the idea was that as long as something is told to such a business that something illegal is happening and they quickly remove it, they cannot be held liable. This is a very simple idea. You tell Facebook, there is a problem. You should take down this content. Here is a court order or here is an actual government order. And Facebook does not take it down. Then Facebook is in trouble. But you can't say that, uh, oh, some ex person put up a video. It's infringing uh, on someone else's copyright. And now let's call Mr. Mark Zuckerberg and feel great about that. That's not how businesses run. If India is actually true about what they just said at World Economic Forum, as the president of G20, they should actually also show maturity in policy making. So the idea is that um, intermediaries, if they are told you have to take this down and this is a problem, then they take it down.
And if they don't, then of course you can tell them because that is how the law will work. Then they lose their safe harbor, which means then you can hold them accountable because they didn't do what you were expecting to do. But now you say, oh, you know what, Mr. Intermediary, because uh, you have this problem here. So we are going to expand the list of our demands, whatever we want. I don't like, uh, today I don't like uh, what uh, perhaps uh, one of the ministers was wearing. Take that down. I don't like Rahul Gandhi's hair. Take that down. I don't like uh, somebody's um, whatever. I, I don't like the video because it's not as interestingly done. Take that down. Now, now the business is like, there is just no limit about all of it. And they are also thinking, if they keep taking down everything, you and I are not going to use that business. If you already know that on Amazon, only the plus, only the positive reviews are available, no negative reviews, because if anybody gets a negative review, uh, Amazon will get sued about it. So Amazon is now incentivized only to publish positive reviews. So the negative reviews will disappear. Do you want to check anything? No, you won't. Why will you go to TripAdvisor to check anything? or mouchet.com because you're like, I don't want a sanitized website. I want the truth. What I want to know is this thing actually works. This thing does not work. What I want to know is this real estate person is going to dupe me and never deliver my flat for seven years. And this educational institution is going to give me IIPM uh, kind of all the issues that had emerged or certain other kind of issues. So I need to be able to assess for myself. Do I want an MBA from IIPM or do I not want an MBA? So all of those things, citizens have to be kept at the center. We just forget that it's about either business or it's about government or it's about, uh, oh, how one minister can threaten Twitter by sending somebody. Or it's not about that. It's about you and me being able to live our lives without all these issues. With our privacy intact, both from the governments as well as the business. Also being able to consume, watch whatever we want. We are watching in our home. We are not forcing anybody else to watch it. In my privacy, I should be able to watch whatever TV I like. If I don't like some, like I find it very funny when lawyers want to say, don't show us in bad lights. Well, don't watch the film, man. And uh, that's it. If nobody's forcing anybody to do it. I would be able, I should be able to wear whatever clothes I like, watch whatever I want to like, consume media from everywhere. And that's about it. The only thing I don't want is don't show me child sexual abuse material. Don't expose me to any crime, etc. Don't give me spam. And for heaven's sake, stop all of these messages coming from various apps to me on WhatsApp or something. That's all I want. So why don't, why doesn't the government actually work on that instead of all the other issues? is something the citizen should be demanding. Thank you so much, Mishi, for speaking with us. Um, as I have mentioned, the deadline for sending feedback regarding this change is January 25. So I'm sure even SFLC.in will be probably sending in their uh, remarks as well. Um, thank you for speaking with us once again, and have a great day. You too. Thank you for having me. And uh, yes, uh, I think all citizens should at least be able to send one tweet or the other, if nothing more about what they think about these issues, because they impact everybody, not just you and me.